Hello everyone, my name is Michael and welcome back to another episode in the Selenium tutorial series. In this episode, we will see how we can use Bright Data Scraping Browser to scale our Selenium script with built-in bot detection, CAPTCHA auto-solving functionalities and proxy management. So yeah, without further ado, let's get straight into this video. Now, what is a scraping browser? A scraping browser is basically a browser hosted in Bryce Data Cloud Environment and built into that browser is browser fingerprinting, CAPTCHA solving, automatically handling cookies, auto retries and IP rotation, managing specific user agents, worldwide geo coverage, JavaScript rendering, and much more. And as you'll see, they offer all of that for the cost of $8.4 per gigabyte. Or if you scale this up, you can go all the way down to $5.88 per gigabyte or use an enterprise plan. You can also pay with AWS Marketplace to get some extra bonuses and benefits. But yeah, now the cool thing about this is you can host this. You'll see here's a code example of Selenium. We could host this in AWS Lambda, and because we have to render our browser, we can run this very efficiently in AWS Lambda and also run this much faster since we don't have to load the browser inside AWS Lambda. And yeah, make sure you use the link down in the description to sign up to get $10 free credit. And also make sure you utilize the free trial they have and test it out. Okay, so after you sign up, make sure you click here to proxies and scraping. And then right here on the browser API, click get started. And we will create a new zone, basically a new browser instance. So let's name our browser selenium underscore browser. Now you will see we have an option here called premium domains. And we can gain access to more challenging to unlock websites that require additional browser API resources. Now this has an extra cost, but just check the list here. And if the website you are trying to scrape is within that list, you should probably activate it to bypass that extra bot detection they have. But I'll skip this for now. We also, we also have a CAPTCHA solver and this automatically detects and solves CAPTCHAs ensuring uninterrupted scraping. And they do that for free basically it's included in the price and we also have some advanced settings here and we can customize our headers and cookies so yeah let's click add and here's our link we'll copy this store it somewhere and let's click continue with browser api playground now let's go on configuration and as you'll see we now have some advanced settings and as you'll see we can assign special ports you can as you'll see you can enable to request special ports for this zone if you want to enable certain ports for your browser we will skip that for now as well and lastly as you will see you can set a zone usage limit which is very useful and it can save you a lot of trouble and as you will see, you can specify a limit on how much money or gigabytes you want to spend per a certain period of time. And as you will see, you can choose an action like, an, like you can get alerted, you can suspend the zone, or you can do both. Again, very useful feature. Now, as you will see, we can also activate or deactivate our browser here. Now, let's visit documentation. And let's see what we can do with it. So let's go on configuration. Let's scroll down. Okay, now let's click Python actually, since we want to use Python and then Selenium. And as you'll see, it's a very simple example. All it does is defines the browser URL here. And then as you'll see, we make a connection to that browser and using that browser, we execute certain tasks. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's create a folder first of all. Let's call it Selenium scraping browser let's open this in terminal and then open it in visual studio code or cursor whatever you use let's create a file called it main.py 
and let's copy the example so we'll click copy i'm gonna copy it here of course make sure you installed selenium so let's open terminal and say pip 3.11 or whatever python version you use install selenium Now let's go back on dashboard and then copy our URL or Selenium URL. Let's paste it here. Can you remove this part? That's fine. And yeah, let's try this example right here. All it does is it visits example.com and then it takes a screenshot. But again, we are not using our browser we are not launching a browser on our machine we are using the browser hosted on bright's data cloud environment so it does it puts almost no pressure in our machine to render the browser so let's run the script and there we go perfect we took the screenshot now let's go back in the documentation Okay, now currently we are using a random proxy each time. So let's see how we can define certain parameters in our proxy. Actually, let's go back on our dashboard. And as you'll see right here, we also have the control view proxy by modifying this username. So let's click that. And as you'll see, if we scroll down, there is a lot of options we can pass in the username field to modify the proxy we use we can specify the country the state the city zip code asn os carrier os we can also control our dns and there's much more options for now let's keep it simple and just define the country so let's go back on our code and at the end of the username right here we'll say dash country dash and here it takes the country code now you can also specify eu if you want to be any country in the eu which is also quite useful but yeah for now let's define a certain country let's say greece so let's say gr now let's visit this url right here which gives us our ip details so we can see if the proxy is actually working correctly and then we will take a screenshot actually let's not do that let's just get the html of that page so let's rerun our script and there you go so as you'll see this is our ip okay this doesn't return the country but let's take this ip and let's go to whatismyip.com let's paste our ip we got and let's click look up ip address and as you'll see there you go it's using a greece proxy perfect now let's see what else we can do let's go to custom cdp functions and as you'll see there is a function called captcha.solve and as you'll see now this is python playwright but i'll show you how you can translate it to selenium but we can visit our our website with a captcha and then execute the captcha solver at a certain step instead of allowing our script to solve it automatically that way we can also know when it is solved and then do an action after it is solved so let's go ahead and see how we can do that with our script now uh, if you scroll down they do have an example code on selenium but this is for enabling or disabling the auto solver. Well, let's take this example and then modify this to actually solve the captcha at that exact step. Okay, so first of all, we'll be visiting this page which has an example captcha. This is the demo recaptcha page. So let's copy the URL, paste it here, and then let's go back. And if we go to Python dash playwright, this is the parameter we need to send captcha.solve so let's paste here the other command we got and then instead of saying captcha.set autosolve we will just say solve now we can also pass the detection timeout detect timeout if we want to and let's say 
30 seconds so 30 multiplied by a thousand because we need to pass the milliseconds and then after the captcha is solved i would like to take a screenshot perfect okay so let's remove that part and yeah let's run our code There you go, as you'll see, verification success. And if we go to that page and solve the CAPTCHA manually, there you go, we get the same result. Perfect. So yeah, that's it for this video. I'll leave both the documentation links down in the description. So make sure you check them out to see what other functionalities you can use. And yeah, thank you very much, Pride Data, for sponsoring this video. And yeah, see you in the next video.